Moo. My name is Phil Maki, and I'm a cartoonist. Drawing fascinated me as a child. Newspaper comic strips and animated cartoons consumed my thoughts. Retail Sunshine is a comedy about people who work in a retail electronics store. It follows their daily lives dealing with problematic customers, overbearing managers, and each other. It's not a series I ever expected to continue, or even develop this far. In 2007, my first book of comics emerged. This officially collected the comic strips from my first long-running series called Livestock. Animals have always been an important part of my life, and in my art, I found myself most interested in drawing them. But over time, that series became pretty darn complicated to make, and I was ready to switch things up in a big way. In early 2008, I was working at an electronics store and had been there for about three years. With so many bizarre and hilarious experiences, it just seemed like an opportunity for comedy. The problem was, drawing cartoon people did not come easily for me. So I experimented with simple stick figures and crayons for color. It was an interesting combination. Stark social commentary and crude, childlike drawings. Yeah, those early comics are pretty rough, but that was the point. They were fun to make, took a lot less time, and people were really responding positively. I secretly resented it. The livestock drawings were nicely rendered, the characters were complex, and there was long-form storytelling. Retail Sunshine was this slap in the face to a series I had been building years beforehand. I actually considered ending Retail Sunshine multiple times and returning to the livestock. For a brief moment, that nearly happened. Ultimately, there was this desire in me to simply make it better. That's what I've been doing for over a decade now, refining the look of the series, writing longer form stories, and fleshing out the characters. It's really developed into a unique blend of humor and design. That's why the series keeps my interest. At this point, there are three books. Sometimes there are comic strips, and other times, stories that rhyme. But they're all part of the same world. An ongoing saga where the customers come to shop and drive the salespeople crazy. Animation has always been on my mind. Back in elementary school, with the help of my cousin Sandy, I animated my first cartoon. It was this black and white short about a surfing skeleton named Skelly. Throughout grade school and high school, my focus moved to comic strips and illustration. Attending Bowling Green State provided an opportunity to pursue animation once more, and that's when I made my first color cartoon. This was the perfect time to animate the livestock. Paper drawings were scanned and colored in a computer. There were plans for a follow-up cartoon, but after graduation, my focus again returned to comic strips and books. Retail Sunshine always seemed like a series well-suited for animation. It was in 2018 when I seriously considered developing an animated series. An all-new book was well underway when something in me was just ready to animate again. But it was 15 years since college, so the idea of getting back into animation was intimidating. Was everything learned in school forgotten? Could I actually make my characters spring to life? Choosing a realistic goal seemed like the best way to go, and since so many great cartoons have a fun theme song, typically under a minute, I went with that. The hardest part was imagining this comic strip world in a three-dimensional way. You see, when making the retail Sunshine comics, it's not necessary to have a super-defined space. But something tells me the things I learned while making this animation will find their way back to the comics. I discovered Kevin Schilder's music in the 90s while playing the PC games Heretic and Hexen. There was something haunting and atmospheric about Kevin's work that's followed me ever since. It was a fantasy, action, adventure sort of game. Um, 
kind of the fantasy version of a very popular game at the time called Doom. Years later, I reached out to him to let him know how much I loved those games and the music he wrote. It was fun to talk to him about his art and what he did, and he asked questions and found out more about the music and sound work that I had done. So we had a good way to kind of connect to each other as artists. And we kept in touch off and on through the years. Things moved beyond mere fandom in 2017. Orientation, the newest retail Sunshine book, was still fresh in my mind, and I thought it would be fun to turn that story into an audiobook. And he kind of gave me the go-ahead to just go ahead and see what I could come up with that might sound good for orientation. We were discussing the music for the audiobook, and in the back of my mind, I was setting things up for potential future projects. Wouldn't it be great if there was a retail Sunshine theme song? The dream was big. Maybe someday there could be a, a, an animated short or an animated show that had featured the retail Sunshine characters. And if that came up, we thought, well, it would be great to have a theme song that would connect with those characters and be something that people would remember as they watched and listened and saw uh, Retail Sunshine then and in the future. I remember asking Kevin if humming a melody would be enough information for him to turn into music. And actually it sounds like this. This is Phil's original recording. <laughs> So, very awesome. Um, Love the idea. What we kind of connected on was that first beginning do 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 idea as a theme or a musical motive or hook that would kind of become the tag that connected us to Retail Sunshine. And so I took that and went back to the orientation music and worked on incorporating that little tag, that little theme song uh, piece into orientation. Musically, I thought that was the end of the story, but in early 2020, it was time to conduct interviews once more for my podcast, Stay Tuned. Steve Bartek agreed to be a guest on the show which was a big deal for me because Oingo Boingo has always been my favorite band, and Steve played a major role in that. What's that? <laughs> the, the, the facial expressions are great. Thank you. Totally oh, wonderful. Um, you. And the music's really good too, so. Well, thank you. That is a, that's a collaboration between myself and one of my childhood musical heroes. When you, when you get it done, if you want a real flute to play that. Oh my gosh, really? Give me a call. Yes, no, I would love, that would, that would make the project so much more special. Thank you. So that sounded like actually a really good idea to me. I love the idea of bringing a live performer into the piece. So I sent my materials off to Steve and then he did his own uh, flute performance to go along with the piece. This musical collaboration took an already personal project and infused a level of emotion that I did not see coming. The goal was always to create a living comic strip. When making the books and comics, still images were treated like a cartoon frozen in time. For the animation, each frame like a moment from the books. Making this film was like taking an advanced animation class. I'm happy beyond my expectations with the results. The theme song is complete. The comic strip characters, my characters, are moving. What's next is to make a full episode, but for now, I can certainly appreciate the animated intro on its own.